Amen. Praise God. Yes, 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 yes. Well, we've been discussing something that we are creatures on a mission. And our series, we are creatures on a mission. And when God created us, He created us for a purpose. He had a very unique purpose for us. One of the things that God did, He handed over what He created to us. Child of God, so it is a sin for us to be broke. Because God never left us empty. In Genesis 1, he handed over whatever he had created on earth in our hands. To manage it, replenish it, and take care of it. So for us to be unemployed, it is true. Because we are looking for jobs. In the kingdom of God, you are automatically employed. There is work for you to do. The problem is we equate our jobs on our payments. We are, we are looking, if you employ me, you have to pay me. When God gave man to be in charge, he didn't say I'll pay you this. It was a partnership. Somebody say partnership. And that's how God works. God works through partnerships. And that's why when he brought his son to redeem mankind after man had fallen, what I call the greatest plan ever was man was also to participate. Remember when God was making man, it is them who made us. Let us make man in our image. But when it came to redeem us, it was God and humanity working together. God needed a Mary. He needed Mary with a Joseph. He needed a Mary with Elizabeth. He needed a Mary with Pontius Pilate. He needed a Mary with Caesar Augustus. He needed a Mary with Judah Iscariot. He needed a Mary with the disciples. With the donkeys. With everything else. With Simon Peter. Everybody participated. Everybody contributed to the redemption of mankind. Because it was our battle. It was our war. It was us fighting to regain what we lost. Child of God, you are, not, you are not trying to create a new way. You are recovering the old way. We are here to recover what we have lost. This is our earth. This is our land. This is our families. It is about the human race against the demonic world. So we fight. That's why the Bible says his name will be known as Emmanuel. God with us. And with God all things are possible. You with God. The church with God. All things are possible. It's not only God doing it. That's why he said when I was talking to Abraham I was almighty. I was doing it all myself. But now you Moses you're going to know me as the Lord which means Jehovah. Jehovah Jireh. You have to prepare something. Then I bless. You have to activate something. Then I anoint. You have to do something. You cannot wait for me because maybe you never understood it you are in charge whether you are a sinner whether you are weak you have responsibility I left this world in your hands don't hand it over easily to devils I gave it to you you are the one in authority I want you to see you do something about it 
In fact, that's what the meaning of prayer is. To do something about something. Where I have responsibility. When I do that, then God will anoint. Then God will move. Then God will bless. That's why he needed a Mary to bring Jesus with Joseph of Arimathea. A man who could prepare a brand new tomb with, with Nicodemus. With, with everybody who participated <inaudible> Because man made the cross. Man made the cross. Man made the nails. Man chose Calvary Hill. Man made the weeping post. Man is the one who whipped Jesus. Man is the one who buried him. Man is the one who guarded the tomb. Man is the one who spread the good news that Jesus is alive. So the least man's participation. There is something man has to do. You can't take it for granted. You can't sit around and say, there's nothing I'm going to do. But during this period of time, as man was participating, there's one particular family that amazed me that Jesus could spot them outside out of every family. When Jesus was doing his last supper, he did something that is incredible. He sent Simon Peter and he said, I want you to go and found a man who is carrying a picture. And I want you to follow him. And go to the house where he enters. And talk to the good man of that house. It's amazing Jesus had not yet died. But there was already good men. There was good Men. Remember when Jesus Christ was coming, he said, Good will towards men. Good will towards men. You know, you get a good will after that business has been transacted. You don't get a good will in during a negotiation. You negotiate it, but you don't get it. You don't touch it. Jesus had not yet died. He had not yet died. But he said, as a baby, peace on us. Good will towards men. So in other words, something of the goodness was already happening to people even before he died. And we see this man chose to build a house. And this was not a hotel. He chose to build a house. Luke 22, 11. And you shall say unto the good man of the house, the master said unto thee, where is the guest chamber where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples? He said Simon Peter, who was always with him in three and a half years. So if Jesus knew this guy, Peter would have known this guy. Peter would not have been sent through a stranger. Peter would have already known the area. Jesus never went to Lazarus' place. He was in Bethphage. That's where he was living. It was in Bethany. Jesus chooses to go to another man's house. He was not Zacchaeus. He was not any other person where Jesus had gone. But he chose to go to a very unique place. This man had built a house and he had put there a guest chamber. Verse 12. And he shall show you a large upper room furnished. He shall show you a large upper room furnished. There make ready. Child of God. When I saw the scripture, then I said, Oh God, 
in the days of Jesus Christ there were those who were anticipating and participating there were those who were seriously sold out and they were not building only their houses they were not only building their tombs these guys were building large places knowing that God will use their facilities this was a big house Jesus on the last supper literature tells us he had a, a supper with between 120 and 300 people because people came some of them brought their children some of them brought their wives some of them brought everybody we only know that between his death and Pentecost there was 120 disciples but mother was there Mary Magdalene was not among the 12 but we can tell that the discipleship had more people than the numbers we've been told which means if a man had a house where he can sit minimum 120 in one room that was a hall that was not just a room that was a banquet hall and it is furnished from today I pray for you God will give you a good house a big house and well furnished I'm sorry about your, 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 your response because the way you are you are responding it's like you are settled for your little houses that's why nobody comes to your house you missed it that's why nobody is visiting your house except your mama your daddy Nobody is visiting your house. Somebody lift up your hand. Say, I am believing God. No, 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 no. Somebody say, I'm believing God for a big house. Amen. 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 Clap your hands seriously. The one who claps and, sh and shouts better. Man, this was shocking to me. I thought I'd build a house. But this scripture challenged me that if Jesus was come today and say invite me a thousand top Christians in your house I want to talk to them I'll have to put up a tent and this was known after Jesus had come I mean this was known after Jesus had died so when, sometimes when we talk about faith in Christians you realize our faith is lacking. The level where we are operating with God is so mediocre that even God can't use it. You're not hearing what I'm saying. If Jesus was to call you to, to visit you and say, go bring your entire family, I want to talk to them to your house. Yes, your house. Even Lazarus, when he rose from the dead, you all know the story. Mary and Martha, they were preparing food. Think about this. Rosa That's why sometimes That's why God ain't raising your dead yet. after he raised Lazarus from the dead they went into Lazarus' household 
Mary and Martha prepared a meal. They don't tell us that they went to the marketplace. They don't tell us what else they did. It means in their house there was enough pantry that they had seen that they, they could prepare for everybody. And the people that were preparing the for so many people came to see Lazarus. To see Jesus and Lazarus whom he has raised. As a table. Mary came and complained that this one ain't helping me out. Imagine those who saw Lazarus and they followed Jesus. They all went into the house. Lazarus was dead. And they went to the house. What kind of houses did they used to live in? The Bible talks about Abraham. Ibrahim, baby, had 318 bodyguards. And, and they were all born, born in his house. So, so what kind of houses these people were living in? in? These descendants of faith, these descendants of Abraham, when you look at what they were doing, it could prove to the world they are different from everybody else. That their God is different. That's why a man could build a brand new tomb, hewn out of entire rock for his burial. And he wasn't sick. I think I seem ready. The things they were putting up <inaudible> proved that their God was different. You're not hearing what I'm saying. The things they were doing on a daily basis. <inaudible> Prove that these people, their God was amazing. They had 12, was it six? Six jars of washing hands before you enter the meeting. Nobody entered into a celebration place with dirty hands. Think about it. That is 2,000 years ago. They had jars where people wash hands before you enter in their meetings. So they were not spreading diseases. Everybody, because you're going to shake hands with somebody, you had to wash your hands. And there were six jars which were prepared according to the Jewish custom. Cleanness. Hygiene. Intelligence. Big houses. Big business. Business and many. Big infrastructures. Was the order of the door. It was a culture. It was a culture. There was no famine in their home. There was no lack. Jesus actually teaches us. Yes, what we get is when that. he rose from the dead, he followed men who were going to Emmaus. And as he followed them, they asked him, a total stranger, come stay with us. Which means there was an extra room in their house. And this is their custom. I'm sorry I'm preaching to people who don't understand what I'm talking about. Better my microphone. I'm preaching to people who don't understand what I'm talking about. I need bass in this and I need loudspeakers. People in their mind. And I'm sorry because when you got saved, when we got saved, we, we, you were never told these things. So you brought your culture in Christianity. You brought your behavior in Christianity. You just came as you are. Hajat here 
Hajati, Hajat miracle, look at the way she's dressed. She was a Muslim covering herself. When she came to Jesus, she totally left her culture behind. You don't see her covering her head. She's dressed like one of the most richest women in Uganda. I'm sorry, I'm talking to people who are so stuck in your tradition. And that is our problem. That God wants to bless you and translate you into his family. But your mindset, the way you were raised, the way you were educated, cannot allow you to be blessed by the Lord. I'm sorry. This is before Jesus, before Calvary. It is pre Calvary. But people having big houses. Zacchaeus brought everybody who came with Jesus on that day and he served them. It was not planned. It was not organized. Jesus sent Simon Peter and said, Simon Peter, follow a man who has a picture. Now, those of you with the umbrellas, don't get up. You're blocking people behind. You. Hallelujah! Get rid of your umbrella. Hallelujah! This was not organized. This was not planned. For, for, Jesus to, for anybody to bring 120 people to your house. Two hours to evening. You will say no. Why? Because it was not organized. It We don't even know the name of the guy. No, And they were coming to have the last supper. Not the last snack. the last snack. And the man arranged and there was extra bread and extra wine. And this is pre-Calvary. And when Jesus died for us, yes, we are too feeding. Before he died, he said, I'm come that you may have life yeah, and have it more abundantly. What does he mean when he said, life. I'm come Did that I... you might have life and have it more abundantly? If Jesus came from heaven and the demon could not stop him, he walked on this earth and the devil could not stop him. He went to Calvary and demons could not stop him. He went to hell and he did some principalities and powers. Then what is it blocking God from releasing the blessings he has promised into your life? Who is standing in the way? Who is standing in your way? Are you satisfied? Are you better off? So what is the problem? Brothers and sisters. He said, go to the man. Go, 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 go to the place. Go find that fellow. Tell the good man. Religion has damaged us so bad. So bad. That everything that is associated with excellence Bigness, greatness, riches, smart, wonderful, 
is worldly. In fact, Ugandans are expecting foreign investors with all their faith, with all their heart, with all their might. Every day, they are are expecting that somebody is going to come from somewhere and come and remove their problem. On a daily basis, I And yet God Katonda is simply saying I am the biggest investor. Work with me. I have come to work with you. When Abraham participated with him, he became a very powerful man. When Solomon worked with him, <laughs> Look at the person next to you. Look at the person next to you. Tell that person. Next time I'm about never to sit near you. Because I don't understand you. I don't understand you at all. Because since last Easter, Easter you were here. You had the same message that Jesus is alive. But everything around you is death. Fire. The Bible said, Bible Gamba, verse 13. And they went and found as he had said unto them. And they made ready the Passover. And when the hour was come, he sat down and the twelve apostles with him. Go ahead. And he said unto them, With the desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. He said, I had a desire. Jesus said, Whatsoever you desire in my name, God will do it. May God give you a house well furnished. People of God, everybody is praying and desiring to serve God. How many of you want to serve God? How many of you want God to use you? You want God to send you to the nations? Put up your hand. You want God to be in your house, and your lives, and everything you do. You have to remove one thing. The way you were raised. You have to kill it and bury it. We don't know when Joseph, the husband of Mary, died. We see him at the beginning of Jesus' ministry. We know Jesus lived for 33 and a half years. But we don't know when Joseph died. But we see Mary everywhere. Two things happen. 
Why did they leave Joseph behind? If he died before Jesus died, Jesus would have resurrected him. Yeah, otherwise, it would have been against his ministry. If he could raise the, 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 um, the, the, the ten year old girl, that girl Lazarus, he would have raised Joseph. So we know he was alive. He wasn't sick because Jesus could heal the sick. Those three and a half years, we know Joseph did not die. But where was he? Where was he when Jesus is everywhere with his mother? Two things happened. Either he was too blessed or he chose not to go anywhere. But I can only conclude with one issue. That this man, the way he was raised, he felt intimidated to follow a stepson. Because as Jesus grew in stature and in wisdom, it was apparent that Joseph was not the father. The way he looked, the way he spoke, the way he had authority, the way he walked on water. None of the Joseph siblings have ever done that. So he was totally intimidated. They called him son of Joseph, but then people changed it to the Nazarene because they realized, oh boy, they realized there was nothing of Joseph in Jesus Christ. And so because of the way he was raised, he wanted to get the glory of Jesus. And people were known. Instead they were praising Mary. Because I believe Jesus somehow, he had Mary's looks. Because of DNA. He had no DNA of Joseph. So he had some looks of Mary. And so they said, Blessed are the breasts that fed you. Not the man who produced you. Though he was man, but he was produced by God. And according to their culture, a man must dominate everything. But he is a man, Christ Jesus, glorifying God all the time. In fact, Joseph felt so bad when Jesus began to say, My Father in heaven. He wanted Jesus to say, My Father in Nazareth. The way you have been raised is hindering you from enjoying what God has planned for you. God is a God of a family. And if we are a family of God and he died for us, we must enjoy what the Father is providing. But because of the way we have been raised, we are limiting God to bless us. If the kingdom of Great Britain was the kingdom of Buganda, Queen Victoria and Elizabeth II will never have made it to the throne. You didn't hear what I just said. They will not have made it to the throne. Because it has to be a man to be a king. That's how the Baganda thinks. The Batolo, the Japadolas. It has to be a man. Elizabeth II and Victoria will not have made it to the throne. But when you look at the house of Windsor, 
which produces the loyal family of England. It is those two women that expanded Great Britain. Great Britain. It was not George. It was not James. It was not others. It was Victoria. That spent the money of the kingdom and spread the empire from sunset sunrise to sunset it was queen victoria that's why her name is even mentioned here as your lake it was queen elizabeth who channeled england through the second world war when german was bombarding and conquering europe that little 18 year old to 25 year old girl as the queen of england she refused to leave England. She said, I'm with you, Church Hill. He said, We will spend every money we have to defeat this German. They will not have made it to the throne. The way you have been raised, the way your tradition are. In fact, the Bible says your traditions have made the word of God of none effect. One of the things you have to deal with is your tradition is the way you've been raised is the way that you've been educated you think you're better off uh, i'm telling you i've just learned of uh, of a 16 year old kid out of new jersey new jersey he has just come up with a, with an idea that a program program he has just designed a computer program you're designing a computer program that is going to merge google youtube what have you all those internet into one system so that you don't have to close one and go to the other. If you have got a smart of a 16 year old little kid he's a Jewish kid so is Zach Bak just the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom for us we fear the Lord and we have the beginning of stupidity Both companies, company zombie, Google, Google, and uh, Zuckerberg programs, Facebook. they are fighting who will take it. Samsung wanted it. Samsung they bidded for that program. Twenty-one billion dollars, and the boy said no. Billion dollar, Someone is gonna become a billionaire at the age of sixteen. Look at the person next to you. I said, I made a mistake. I sat next to you. Tell him, I said, I thought the anointing is going to come from you and rub off me. But instead, the opposite is coming to me. But thank God Jesus died and rose again. 
He proved to mankind that you can you can go as deep as down as hell. But you'll bounce back. The message of resurrection. It doesn't matter how deep you are going down. Man and situations and circumstances. They may push you down as hell. But with God, you are coming back up again. You have to have the mind of Christ. Because Jesus is a man who went so down to the bottom of hell. So down to the bottom of hell. Many of us, when our business fails, we just crash on earth. Jesus yes. went beyond crashing. He went deep in hell. But he came back swinging. And he did it in three days. Therefore, I decree and declare that every three days you are going up. In fact, I looked at Jesus when he began to deal with the tradition and witchcraft and powers of hell. It was three and a half years. He did it in three and a half years. You remember Joseph and the famine? It lasted for three and a half years. And the famine was over. It was over in Egypt. It was supposed to be for seven years. But the first year, the second year, the third year, fourth year half, Joseph Joseph is the prime minister. The famine is over. People of God, in three and a half years, your problems are coming to an end. Since we began 77, we are now in the second year. So we have another one year to go and a half. Then you have destroyed every traditional thinking in your mind. Somebody clap your hands to Jesus. You are about to become a multi-billionaire. People of God, we have a job to do. We have to prove to the world that we are different people. In fact, according to God, we are a royal priesthood. You are a member of the royal family. When a princess shows up in the even though they are ugly, they say the princess is here. Give them way. They sing for the God in heaven. They are singing for you. You are a member of the royal family. I'm sorry, I'm talking to traditional people. We are a member of the royal family. We are the royal priesthood. The Bible says we are a holy nation. The Bible actually calls you a nation within a nation. Every nation has its currency. It has its defense systems. It has its education system. It has its mechanism. It has its infrastructure. From today, you are not just a person. You are a nation. I say you are a nation. So you gotta have your own currency. Your money is the blood of Jesus. Your infrastructure is the Holy Ghost. Your defense system is the word of God. I don't know whom I'm talking to. You're going to drive better. Sleep better. Eat better. Look at the person next to you. Say, so do you know who you are?
Do you know what God made you to be? I know you know who you are. You are a son of Dodo. And your mother is Nama Mon. Mama Oye Nama. Sister Nama. Listen, let me tell you something. If you get a Jewish family, a family of Udaya, and they come here, within a year, they will develop their own system, their own food, their own way of opening up, their, way, their friends, and in a short period of time, they will be having more money than anybody else in their environment. What do they do? These people of the East, the Chinese, the Indians, operate the same thing. Because the Jews are people from the East. Actually, their nation is in Middle East. They have the ability of hearing invisible voices. Who could imagine that India will grow spices and the whole world will buy it? And they will make tea and the whole world drinks it. They will make tea and the whole world drinks it. When are they going to eat our matoke all over the world? Do you know why? Do you know why we don't want to eat that? When the governor of, of, of England in India governor was they, every year they used to call them or two years to call them to go and meet the queen or the king. So the governor who was over India, governor I don't know, I think his name was Debelier. When he went back, he went with tea. And spices. And he presented what he had brought from India. The king, I think. King. And, and then. They tested the tea. It was, it was very cold. And so they used to trade in China, so they brought the cups. You know, all those cups you see for for tea are not made in England. Originally. They call it China. All those beautiful cups they were made in China. But the Indians used to go to China and, and shop. <laughs> so he brought a tray of <laughs> cups <laughs> and tea <laughs> and bowl for sugar. <laughs> and he presented it. <laughs> tea became an English thing. <laughs> that man was automatically made a knight and became a, a <laughs> member of the House <laughs> of Lords. <laughs> and the members of the royal family started marrying in his family. Automatically, he became a landlord. In the UK. And he became one of the greatest, great. His, his great grandson was a commander in the, in the, in the Gulf, Gulf War. But it goes down there. Because someone could find something that is easily sold cheaply. Something that people don't think to be a treasure. And he took it to another level. He could bring a cup from China. And he could bring the sugar from UK. Actually, sugar from UK has come from Jamaica. So he got the sugar from Jamaica. The cups and plates from here. Then he got the spoons from, from uh, Scotland. He got a tray from Africa. And he had a teapot. And he had tea. And he presented it. And England endorsed it. There is no shamba of tea in England. 
Mungereza. None. Tell you. But we call it the English breakfast. Twinning tea. Mamita <laughs> twinnings. Look at the person next to you. He said, why don't you tell him, to ask him, why don't you take the blood and the word and the name and the Holy Spirit and change your life. Lift up your hands. Say, thank you, Jesus. I'm yours. I am blessed. I'm anointed. I move faster, stronger, and powerful in the grace of God. You are my God. Now I know you died and rose again. Child of God, in this house, the man who carried the water washed the, the banquet table. His water cooked the soup, opened the juice. The owner of the house, his house was used to host Jesus. His last meal before he died. Brothers and sisters, we all believe we are living in the last days. There's no doubt about it. The world is coming to an end. We might be the last generation before the world comes to an end. We, must be the, we might be the last generation. And we are the one to see the second coming of the Lord. Now, I want you to know this. What are you going to do if this is the last generation that will see the second coming of the Lord? What are you going to do? What are you doing? What are you participating in? There are those who brought the spices. The lane to wrap him in. The empty tomb to put him in. What about those who baked the bread he ate? What about those who Brothers and sisters, it seems that everybody was participating. There were so many Roman soldiers. But I'm amazed about this one. At 6 p.m., Jesus' body is about to be brought down. One soldier went and broke the leg of another thief. And another one broke the other one. They were about to break Jesus. And they say he's dead. And the man said, let me find out. Think about the last minute. This guy is getting the opportunity to also do something on Jesus. I don't know how people get such opportunities. Either it's their audacity, either it's because of sheer grace, or just faith, crazy faith. He gets a javelin and goes and pierced the side of Jesus. And the Bible says water and blood came out. Oh my God. Do you know that Jesus was about to be buried with that blood? And if that blood was taken to hell, some demons would have got saved. Some demons would have repented. Because there's power in that blood. It is the earth that needed the blood. And the Roman soldier saved our day. Otherwise, we should be dealing with saved demons right now. And he emptied the last socket of blood. And it also fell down. And water. So Jesus entered the grave empty. So there's no doubt about it. They're going to drive hell out. 
What are you doing right now? I believe this is going to be one of the last great revival the world has ever seen. If you look at all indicators, the emails people are sending in, they are flying in. They say we're going to pay for our hotels. We're going to, we're going to take care of ourselves. You just get us a driver to bring us in the meeting. They are coming. They are coming. We say we just want to wear this. They sell good food. In a good hotel. And we are coming in revival. Child of God. Everybody I've talked to. Everybody is saying. That this might be. The greatest revival the world has ever seen. So what are you doing? I believe that's the Roman centurion with his javelin. When he pulled it out. It was full of blood. Blood. The, the Passion of the Christ movie shows it. Passion of the Christ that the blood and water covered this man. We don't know his name. But I believe he must be the grandfather of Gucci. You are not here what I'm talking about. Child of God. This is how you're going to break your tradition. Prayer. Prayer. Amen. Thank you for your loud enthusiasm. Let me leave you with this. Because you are running out of time. Let me leave you with this. Jesus spent the last moment before they put hands on him. The last moment of his time. Pray. Before they put their hands on him to cause him to suffer for your sins and my sins. He spent those moments that last hour pray. What does that tell you about prayer? What does that tell you? If he who came from heaven if a son of God who had the power to raise the dead to walk on water spends the last one hour of his life praying what does that tell you? and it was through prayer that his mind changed his mind changed through prayer his will changed through prayer. He overcame temptation through prayer. He was able to see the glory of God. For the Bible said when he saw the glory that was set before him he endured the cross. So which means through prayer he was able to see beyond Calvary beyond the grave beyond the nails and he saw the glory that was coming and he said come and buy and buy. What does that tell you about prayer? Prayer will change your minds. Prayer will break every tradition. Our biggest problem is the way we were raised. Is the way we deal with things. We grew up in huts. When you build a big house, you build your house in as modern a hut. times. It's a hut in modern times. It's a modern hut. I was privileged to go to Italy. And the biggest room in Italian house is the kitchen. 
everybody who is associated with the Italian families, Buli even in America. Nemo America, ba Italy, bo American, Italian Americans. Ab America, ba Italy. In, in their houses. Mayumba gawe. The biggest thing. E chifechi singo bugazi. Is the kitchen. The fumbiro. Most of the Europeans, I believe. Awa zungu awa singa wendo hoz. The kitchen. E fumbiro. The bathroom. The British, the biggest room in their house, British, French, and others, the French is wine. Is the cellar. The cellar is the biggest of the house. The English, Americans, America, the library. Every president that leaves office leaves a library. president office, library Every great man that ever lived has a library. Libraries. The biggest thing in an African house is the bedroom. The bedroom. The we sleep more, we produce more. Stand up on your feet. When Jesus came, he said, My house shall be a house of prayer. Lift your hand. Say, Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, you are changing my mind for your glory for your honor in Jesus mighty name amen and amen for your glory in this great plan of you for my redemption for my life Lord I'm ready I'm ready Lord to do anything for your glory for your power for your life in me 
Jesus. I'm ready, Lord. I'm ready, Jesus. I'm ready, Jesus. I surrender to you. Where are yes? I demolish my tradition. My way of ray being raised. I embrace your new way. The new way of resurrection. Of salvation. It is a lifestyle. It is a lifestyle of faith. It is a lifestyle of joy. Lord, I open up to the Holy Ghost more than ever before. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen and amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, the world we must prove to the world that de the death of Jesus was not in vain. There is a world to convince. There is a generation to convince that our Jesus did not die in vain. And you are the candidate God has chosen. You are the generation God is going to reveal They have to see your lifestyle. The way you talk. The way you walk. The way you walk. The way you live. The way you sleep. The way you dwell. The way you change people's lives. You're going to become the biggest investor Uganda has ever known. In fact, let me say, you are the biggest investor Uganda and the world has ever known. But our mindset must change. I said our mindset must be changed. Lift your hands and say, I'm, 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 say, I'm grateful, Lord. I'm happy, Lord, that you could think of me in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just for you. Just for me, he did it for you. Not for someone else. In order for us to have a better life. I see you in your big houses. You don't want a big house? Stay in your mujini. But all of you, may God give you a house. Big enough. Even when the children go off and they get married, you will tell Turn your house into a prayer cell. Into a Bible study. May he give you a big swimming pool for the baptism of the village. My God. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Lift up that says, Jesus is coming to my house. Yes, Tell your neighbor, say, My Jesus is coming into my house. So today, all of us are going to participate in publishing the Holy Spirit. So get hold of your seed.